All right, so uh, good evening and welcome to uh, JW2542 Tutoring. This is my SAT math course I'm offering once again online. Uh, lesson number 10, graphing circles tonight. But before we begin, uh, quickly, I uh, spent many years as a street performer and musician, uh, making a living in New York. I decided to take my earnings and uh, complete my college degrees. And I went to graduate school, completed those courses. Um, passed all those professors' courses, uh, did a lot of work, and became a math teacher. Instead, I wasn't very happy in the arts, so I uh, felt uh, like I'd rather be a math teacher. So um, in the, uh, giving back to the community, um, uh, with uh, genuine thanks for your uh, nice contributions, uh, here is my SAT math course for free. Um, I've been developing it for nine years now, ten, going on 10, and I would like to get it published as a book. Um, which hopefully will happen soon as the material it become, becomes 100% original. And uh, you can donate for the development of this course at Venmo. It's completely voluntary. I do recommend $50 per lesson, which is very standard for tutoring prep courses. But this is like a, a modular class, meaning it's like a checklist of lessons so you can perform better on the SAT exam. Um, you can also email me at jsmw2542 at gmail.com if you would like access to the course quizzes, classwork and homework, and support videos. Um, I also do have practice tests and can be hired for at an hourly rate for um, prep for any standardized test, uh, grades 5 to 12, as well as in college and for graduate uh, schoolwork. Okay, so uh, let's get started today. Uh, we're going to go to da, 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 grabbing circles. So again, just as an introduction, the SAT mathematics sections are uh, mostly focusing on ninth and 10th grade math. Uh, there's the new digital SAT that's beginning this year and next year. And uh, in its current form, however, the uh, major topics are algebra, geometry, the coordinate plane, charts and graphs, probability and statistics, and a few other math topics from ninth and 10th grade math mostly. The SAT is being rewritten and most of the trigonometry will be taken out. For example, there'll be no more questions on complex numbers. You won't have to add, subtract, multiply, or divide with the complex plane. Um, in its current form, however, it's still 20 questions and 25 minutes in section three and 38 questions and 55 minutes in section four. Uh, furthermore, um, if you do work with a prep book or a series of books, even better is to work with a prep course where you have a, a teacher that can be your guide and you can get feedback from. Uh, here I have my 28 lessons shared here. Uh, online, I'll be sharing 22 of these lessons. You can see that it begins with like over a third that are algebra, and then it goes to geometry and some trigonometry lessons, and ends with charts and graphs and probability and statistics. The reason prep students perform better on standardized tests than some other students isn't just because of completing homeworks or mastery of the course. It's working with a prep course that helps you with your time management, any anxieties that you have for lessons and helps you target your weaknesses and uh, achieve higher level scores. So for example, if you're having trouble with the Pythagorean theorem, we could uh, go over that lesson with an extra hour and provide more worksheets uh, for that topic so that you're ready for the Pythagorean theorem questions as presented on the SAT. Uh, so you can go through and like, let's say you're a student, you're like, wow, I'm having trouble with lessons five, nine, and 17, and 21, 23. Then we can provide extra worksheets and help you budget your time wisely and take the test with mastering confidence. Furthermore, the SAT math section can be uh, mastered uh, with a practical beginner strategy. You see the uh, test itself, which has 58 questions, is arranged in blocks of easy, mid, and challenge level questions in the math section. This is very similar to high school and college level math exams, where you have the basic concepts first for the first third of the test. You have some combination questions uh, in mid level, and then the exam ends with the hardest problems at the end. So it's like that for the multiple choice section, which I've highlighted in green for easy, yellow for mid, and red for caution uh, challenge questions are the last third. Then the grid in questions here in, in uh, black and white 
are also arranged level one being easy to the cluster of more difficult questions at the end. So a very good strategy for the SAT exam is to work on the first 10 problems and uh, try and get 10 out of 10, skip over, do the grid-ins, then come to the end of the exam and note the time. Say you have 12 minutes remaining, then go back to question 11 or any questions you skipped and work on the challenge block with the remainder of the time. This is a much more practical and uh, use of your time for the SAT exam. And you'll be answering more questions accurately that are easy and mid-level and then spending the remainder of your time with just the challenge level block. So it's much better for not only time management, for also, but also for points accumulated towards your SAT grade. In section four, also the first 20 questions are considered a lot easier. Then you would skip the questions 21 to 30, do any easy ones at the grid in, come to the end of the exam. So you have 27 minutes left. Then you go back to question number 21 or any questions you skipped and work on those for the remaining 27 minutes. Again, it's a much better use of your time on a standardized test. You'll have less anxiety. And you'll also, since you've solved 20 of the problems, your mind will start to connect those metacognitive problems, those multi-step problems that are in the challenge block. So you have a better chance of using your time properly once you re or go back to questions 21 to 30. With this strategy, um, I personally, working for over 15 years with this standardized test, have seen over 90% of my students receive a score on uh, practice tests above a 500, between five and 600. And this is important for student confidence, self-esteem, but also colleges are looking for scores that are above 500 in the math section and ELA section. Uh, then as the student gains more confidence, we can work on increasing the, their average score by blocks of 50, which is another story. As I mentioned, strategies like targeting the weaknesses, weak lessons, uh, more English vocabulary fluency with keywords or other time management issues. Uh, this is very important at tutoring houses where students speak multiple languages or speak a different language other than English or are not English speakers in their home environment. Um, this is the normal curve. It is a normalized test with almost 2 million data points annually. And you can see that the College Board uh, assigns a mean score once they uh, calculate the average of the 58 questions. Say one year it's uh, 34 correct is the mean. Then they would make that a 500 score. Then they use the standard deviation spread of the data to make the blocks of 100. So one standard deviation is worth 10, 100 SAT points, excuse me. And then two standard deviations would be another 100, 200. And uh, a perfect score is an 800. Also, uh, the lowest score that's possible in the SAT is a 200, giving the range of scores in between two and 800 for the SAT math section. Some basic skills you need before you get to any of the lessons, make sure you have working knowledge of PEMDAS, the order of operations, that you're familiar with linear and quadratic word problems, uh, linear equations such as y equals mx plus b, adding and subtracting two equations to simplify, as well as any shortcuts that you know from your work with various lessons in ninth and 10th grade math. Uh, tonight, we'll be focusing on Lesson 10, Graphing Circles, for our free lesson here uh, online. And uh, I'm going to start with a few uh, warm-up examples uh, with the general form for graphing a circle in the coordinate plane. But before we do that, we're going to uh, share, just like we do in school, we have when students sit down, they put their book bags down and get their writing instruments ready and pen and paper. We have a warm up quiz. So we always warm up with five math questions as the students are coming from other subject areas or English class or science or other activities. So there's two easy, two mid and one challenge level question that starts each class. And then these are graded uh, five questions out of five being a perfect score. And uh, then you too can see how you're doing consistently and have 
longitudinally track how your progress is on the easy, mid, and challenge level questions for this exam. So I invite you one and all to, uh, to uh, copy and paste the link here that's on the screen for this uh, Google form, and it will open up to a fresh form for you to try the five question quiz. And what I'll do at the same time is I'll turn on my stopwatch and I will uh, be checking the forms on the, my side screen here as you work on uh, SAT quiz number 10. Um, so good luck. Uh, there are word problems, so I'll give you 12 minutes for these uh, five practice questions. Then after these 12 minutes, actually, because I get an extra two minutes for word problems, then we will go over each question step by step. I will give a solution that so you too can learn to solve it in less than two minutes per question. Okay, so good luck and uh, please begin SAT quiz number 10. I'll see you in 12 minutes. Good luck.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is time for SAT quiz number 10. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, go over uh, each of the questions and I'll show you a method to solve each one in less than two minutes. Here we go. Question number one. If a film projector worker uh, switches reels every 30 minutes, the movie is 143 minutes long, how many real switches are needed to uh, show the audience the full movie? Well, you have to think of it this way. This is like an old style movie where it's in sections. It's not all saved on one, uh, one like digital production. So the first reel will be from zero to 30 minutes. And then the second reel will be from 30 to 60 minutes. Then the next reel will be from, a uh, film will be from 60 to 90 minutes. That will be that section of the movie. And then the fourth section of the uh, movie will be from 90 to uh, 120 minutes. And then the fifth section of the movie will be the rest of it, because it only goes up to 143. Okay, so that's the way it is. You have these giant wheels of film. Maybe, maybe you haven't studied this in science class. Maybe there should be a picture drawn. But you have a, a, a wheel of film, and then the ribbon goes through a projector window, like so. Like a, a ribbon of film it's wrapped around like a yarn and then it goes through a camera window and then it projects onto the screen so you can see the image of the person on the screen uh and they were they look like this i think maybe you have seen them in Maybe in like old movies, they're like there's a wheel to wheel, and so then when all the ribbon of film is done, then there'd be a switch. So then a one worker would quickly take off that wheel, put the new one on, and then it would feed the little ribbon, and then they, you'd watch the next portion of the film. So there's one switch there to go from thirty to the sixty minute reel. There's another switch, another switch, and another switch. So that's one, two switches, three, four switches, and the correct answer was C. Yeah, maybe that needs to be reworded because it's kind of an old problem. You don't if you if you're not a science student, maybe you don't you haven't seen old film projectors where they're they're reels. You don't know what they're referring to. So there should be a picture or something. All right, uh, let's go to the next one. That's kind of a dated problem. All right, number two. A sporting goods store, one scooter and three bicycles is 1625. So I'll just say A for scooter plus three B for bicycle is 1625. According to the same store, you can buy four of these scooters plus two bicycles and you can pay 2000. What is the cost of one bicycle and one scooter? Well, this is the typical SAT shortcut that we've talked about in previous lessons. So here, when you have the SAT shortcut step, you either add the system together or subtract. So should we add? Should we subtract? What should we do with these two equations? That's order number one. You walk into the store, I'd like a scooter and three bikes. The store says that's 1625. Second customer walks in, four scooters and two bicycles, please. And the store says that'll be $2,000. The skill here is add them together quickly. So we're going to add the system of equations together and we get five scooters plus five bicycles is 36.25. Amazing. So we just pretend that we combine the two orders. So if we're going to, so we're going to put all the scooters together and uh, so we're going to use addition. Using addition. All right. Why use addition? Well, rhetorical question. 
see if we use addition then we have the rate for uh five bicycles and uh five scooters the question stem says what's the cost of one bicycle and one scooter so we could divide by five but it's easier to just double it so that means 10 scooters plus 10 bicycles must be well what's double 36 that's 7200 and double 25 is 50 so 7250 that's easier to divide by 10 because then we just cross off the zeros and uh one scooter plus one bicycle is 725 dollars and we have the correct answer choice a you can see that because then we just have one and one is a 725 using the add shortcut for the system okay any questions on number two Going, going, gone. Next one. All right. Very good. Uh, number three. Both parents work in a family. They say, what? Oh, and they save $10,000 after one year. Yay. They go to a bank and deposit the money into a savings account at 5% annual interest. How much money will they have in the bank after five years? Oh, golly. All right. So let's write this out. We know that the amount final will be the principal to start with ten thousand dollars and we're going to have one plus five percent and we're going to trust the bank compounded for t years t is five so we have a ten thousand uh in decimal 1.05 that's one plus five percent that's a percent time uh raise to the fifth power all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just do the exponent and leave the ten thousand on the left 1.05 raised to the fifth is a multiplier of 1.27628 times 10,000, meaning that's how much your money will grow. It looks like 27%. But we have one, two, three, four decimals. So that means it'll be $12,762 and 80 something cents is 82 cents. And then rounding out to the nearest dollar it's like we have to round up 12,763 there it is c is correct for question number three compound interest notice with the setup you had to know that the principal or starting amount goes on the left and the multiplier block can be expressed as this exponent there's the multiplier of your money at the end of five years, you'll have an extra 27%, no matter what you start with. You're starting with $10,000. So it's an excellent way to manage your finance. You know, projecting the uh, percent gain from uh, the safe investing in the bank. Okay. Oops, I got to erase that. Just bore. It says, if n is a positive integer and 2 to the n plus 2 to the n plus 1 equals k, what is 2 to the n plus 2 in terms of k? Clever problem. Very well-written problem. Um, this is from an actual old SAT. Um, 2 to the n plus 1. So what I'm going to do is that's, that's k. I'm going to leave the first exponent alone, and then I'll write this as 2 to the first power times two to the n, because that's the law of exponents backwards. We're rewriting the second exponent into something more useful. All right. So now check out what we have here. We have two to the n, and we have two to the first times two to the n. Because remember, you add the exponents. That would be two to the same base, one plus n, or n plus one. So you just rewrote it in a way that's useful because then look at the blue box. We have two, one to the n plus two more, which means that we have three of those things, three of those blue boxes. So in other words, we have three, because we have one here plus two more, we have three, what? Two to the n's, that's equal to k. 
So that means, when I'm coming over here, that 2 to the n equals k over 3. But we don't want 2 to the n. We want 2 to the n plus 2 more 2s. So we have to do 2 squared times 2 to the n on the left, which means we have to do 2 squared times k over 3 on the right. So then add the exponents. We have 2 to the 2 plus n, or n plus 2. And that's equal to, well, 2 squared is 4. 4k upon 3. And lo and behold, the correct answer is B. Okay, here I just multiplied both sides by 4. Because that will scale up the exponent into n plus 2. All right, so clever use of that base 2, reviewing uh, how you can uh, simplify exponents using the product rule and the uh, product rule for exponents. Okay. Last one, question five. Question five says, given the parabola, y plus 3 equals x squared minus 3x minus 7. What is the positive zero solution? We know y plus 3 equals x squared minus 3x minus 7. Take away 3, take away 3. y equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now we have it in standard form. c equals negative 10, and we want to find two numbers that add up to b equals negative three, right? It's the coefficients for the factoring method. So negative three and 10, negative three, 10 is the number we need to factor. Here we go. We could have, let's see, it's a negative 10. So we need one side to be negative, the other side to be positive. But three is kind of small. So we'll make the smaller number negative first. See what happens. And we want it to be. Ooh, right. We need the larger negative uh, number in terms of the, the absolute value of it. Okay. Anyway, negative one and 10. No, negative two and five. No, negative five and two. Yes. Okay. So there's our winner, winner, chicken dinner. We write X take away five times x plus 2, and that's equal to a y, a factor of 4. Then the solutions are x equals 5, zero product, or x equals negative 2 for this equation. So the correct answer was 5. So we're being factor methods for the ABC factoring. 5 is the positive solution. The end. All right, now let's go to our core lesson. We're going to look at uh, graphing circles tonight. And you can see that uh, there's the first page. If you'd like access to this course and uh, copies of the model problems as well that I've designed personally, you can, uh, again, email me at jsmw2542 at gmail.com. Focusing on graphing circles. Well, in addition to functions such as linear, quadratic, polynomial, and exponential, the SAT also includes other questions that test knowledge of the Cartesian plane. The circle equation is a relation represented with the following general form. We have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared with the center hk and the radius r. Should look familiar. It's just like the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but with a difference of value so we can place it in the center of the circle anywhere on the map that we choose. Here is an example. What is the center and radius of the circle below? We have X plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 25. So the center is following the rule. Well, negative h, so we have a positive 3, so it must be at 
negative three, the double negative. And uh, since it's minus four, that means K is positive four. So it should be at negative three, four. And there it is. That's the center of the circle. Go to our arrows, you can see that better. All right, there's negative three and there's positive four pointing to this exact location of the center. Finally, remember 25 is the radius squared. So R is the square root of 25 or five. So we can eliminate this one because it has R is not 25. And then we can eliminate the others because the center is not three, four. And the center is not in quadrant three, it's in quadrant two, as you can see in the picture. The correct answer was D. We're in quadrant two. We're up here in quadrant two. So the center is negative three, four, and the radius was five. Example two. What is the distance between two points AB atop the two circles given below? Atop. All right, so we have two circles equations. The first one is x plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared is 25. The second is x minus 5 squared plus y minus 12 squared equals 16. What we'll do here is we'll draw them with the coordinate plane with the hairdryer and Desmos. So use the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem for the points on the top of the circle. So let's say, well, let's pretend we had like two pictures, for example. And then your mom or dad says, okay, can you put the picture down here on the wall and put a nail at the top or, or a hanging, a hanging uh, stud here for the top? And then also for the second picture, well, we want it to be hanging from up here. So then the writer is saying, well, what's the difference between the top of this picture frame and the top of the first and the second picture frames? That's the idea. What's the spacing between the tops of the circles? So there is a pre-step. The circle here is at negative three, four. That's the one we just drew, right? But then to get to the top, you have to climb up five units. I should annotate this. So what I'm saying is, is that you have the right circle center However, you have to go directly up five units to go to the top. Similarly, with this circle, the center is at 5, 12. You can see here, 5, 12. But it has a radius of r squared is 16, so that's four units higher than that to find that location. So now we can say, well, that was 5, 12, but we went up four more units. So this is 516 in the coordinate plane. And then here we're at negative 3, 4, but we go up another 5 units. So that's negative 3, 9. All right? Am I making sense? So those are the points that we're connecting. Then we can use the Pythagorean theorem. I'll space it out. I always like to draw it because then I would make fewer errors. From negative 3, that's 3 units to the axis, plus another 5. That's an 8 units on the bottom. And then climbing up, we're at nine, but we have to go up to 16. So we have to go up seven units. So to find the distance D here, which is the hypotenuse or red line here, we do eight squared, which is 64 plus 49. Wait, the 49 is covered, which gives us 113. The correct answer is the distance D is the square root of 113. That's it for question number, example number two. A was correct. So I wrote the, the uh, distance formula. You can see how you can also draw it and use the Pythagorean theorem. You're going to get eight units for the bottom. You're going to get 16 minus nine gives us seven. We're squaring it, so it doesn't matter which way you subtract. It will be seven units of physical distance between the right angle and the top. And there you have it. The hypotenuse is the square root of 113. Let's go to the next one. Example three. What is the slope of the line connecting the center of each of this circle? 
of each circle. There's four circles drawn. You can see the uh, four equations for each. And they're sort of like ripples in the water going along like, right? Uh, you can see here the four circles kind of overlap as they go with a positive slope to the right. So using the centers of the circle, you can see that I would use the first one goes through zero, zero, the blue circle. And the green circle is at nine, no, it's not the center. Was it 912? Yeah, it's at 912. Is that 912? So that's good enough. 12 over 9. Here, that's what I did. That's the green circle. 12 minus 0, the green and the blue circle. See? Over 9 minus 0, which reduces to 4 thirds. And the correct answer was E. It's an unusual advanced question for the SAT. You just simply find the slope between the center points. I don't pick them all up. Okay, last technical point. Um, before we relied on such amazing graphing calculators that we have, and now we have computer uh, computer drafting tools, um, draftsmen and draft women could draw circles on the paper with a, a clever method. And I'd like to share with that with you here. What I'll do is I'll draw rectangles instead of the right triangles. I think you'll be able to, to see what I mean. Okay. So uh, a 12-point circle is uh, where you, here, for example, we have uh, x minus 6 squared plus y minus 8 squared is 25. All right. So the center is at 6, 8, as you can see here. And... Uh, Here's a six for the x-axis, and here's a eight for the along the y-axis. So that's pointing towards shows you the center is at six eight, but we have to go five units away because the radius is five, which we have here. All right, the radius is five. So what does that mean? It means. that we can go five units straight up and there'll be a point on the circle. Or we can go five units down and there'll be a point on the circle. We can go five units to the left. There's a point on the circle, we can draw that in. Five units to the right, we can write that, that point there. We have four of the points that are definitely on the circle. But we wanna draw a circle freehand so it's spaced out nicely. And the trick is, is knowing your Pythagorean triangles. So we can use the three, four, five right triangle like this. That's four and that's three, meaning that the diagonal has to be da, 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 five. Right? This pink line has to be five units because it's got a base of four and a height of three. I can take that same blue rectangle that I just drew and I can flip it, I'll rotate it. So now it's got a base of three and a height of four. But the diagonal across the rectangle is precisely five because it's a three, four, five right triangle. So that's another point that's on the circle because it's three from the center, it's three and it's an up four. We can repeat this process with the three, four, five right triangle. Go three to the left and then up four. There's a point on the circle. Or you can go four to the left and up three. That point has to be on the circle because that's a three, four, five right triangle. And then there's, so there's two more points in quadrant one, but in terms of the quadrature of the circle, that's two more points in quadrant two. And then here relative to the center, we can go four units and then down three, because that's a three, four, five, right triangle with radius five, or uh, three units left and down four. We have two more points for our circle drawing. And finally, you can do that as well here, go down four and then three to the right, or you can go three, you know, four to the right and three down. But you'll create eight more points that are anchored on the circle. Then if you're drawing freehand, you can just sketch it much nicer with 12 points. Notice that the skill is getting those two extra points in each quarter of the circle using and flipping some Pythagorean triangle here. The three, four, five triangle makes sense because 
the radius is five. All right, so it's just a nice sort of drafts, draftsman or draftswoman skills for drawing. Okay, enough said. All right, so uh, you guys have to get to work with this formula. So uh, looking at the classwork, you're going to see a variety of problems with the, with the, you have to know the vocabulary, radius and diameter and circumference and area um, with circles on the coordinate plane. If you click on the link here for classwork, uh, again, I'll leave the the uh, the form active for you. And you have 20 minutes to practice the even questions only. So just 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24 tonight. Because we only have a 90-minute class. At the end of your 20-minute independent practice, I will return and we will go over one easy, one minute, and one challenge level question to end the class. And then again, you can contact me by email if you have any further questions about this course that's being offered. So thank you so much for watching this video and enjoy, just click on the link, uh, SAT classwork number 10, Wrapping Circles. I'll see you in 20 minutes.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is time for uh, SAT classwork number 10. I'm going to do is an X out just for a second to refresh the slideshow to make sure that I have the correct answers here on the answer key, which I will read to you now. So it refreshes. I think there's one error here. This needed to be rounded to the nearest dollar. So 599, any others? So I can... Fix that right. Yeah. All right. Um. Here we go. So uh, thank you for participating. Here come the answers to the graphing circles classwork. One was B, two was C, three was C, four was A, five was A, six was A, seven was C, eight was B, nine was D, ten was C, eleven was D, twelve was C, thirteen was B, fourteen was B. 15 was A, 16 C, 17 B, 18 C, 19 A, and 20 was A. 21, 81, 22, 599, 23 was 8, 24 was negative 28, and 25 was $78.30 after the depreciation. All right, let's go over uh, one easy, one mid, and one challenge level. Again, we only do the even questions on uh, these days, the circumference of the circle. Uh, swing your pencil. All right, let's look at number two. Number two says, see, we do have some facts here. We have the center, HK, and we have the radius from the right. So noting that we have H equals negative 5.4, and K is negative 7.2. And that will tell us the location of the center of the circle is in quadrant three. And then R squared is 16. Therefore, the radius is four. But the circumference is pi times the diameter or two pi radius. So two pi times four is eight pi. The correct answer based on this radius was choice C. C eight pi was correct for question two. Let's go to a mid-level question. If there's no one participating in chat. Let's see, easy level, easy level, easy level eight, nine, ten. Uh, graphing circles. 12, 14, polar coordinates. So at mid level. All right, the door frame. All right, the door frame is designed so an eye hole is not blocked. What's the area of the shaded region between the two circles on the door? Well, here it's hanging like a door frame. It's hanging like a Christmas wreath, so to speak. But this being a free country, it's hanging like a door design with an eye hole here, like a, a portal window. All right, so the eye hole is in is the uh, smaller circle. So you have to do large circle minus the smaller circle to get the green shaded region. Well, not that difficult because you can see that the large circle has a radius squared equal to nine, right? Remember that the right side is r squared equal is equal to nine for the large circle. And the smaller circle has r squared equal to one. And I have to put the little two above. I'm just going to uh, adjust the font here. r squared, the exponent is not written. Uh, hello, exponent. r squared is nine and r squared is one. But the area is pi times the radius squared. So area is pi r squared for any circle. So it's nine pi for this circle because we already know r squared, which is on the right side here and here. All right, so then nine pi minus one pi is eight pi units. The the around the around the i here, this uh, green region. The correct answer was c. C was indeed correct for. Question number 16. 
All right, moving along. One challenge level question. Let's see what's going on here. 18? That's a weird one. 20? Oh, 20 is a good one. I remember designing these. We were getting more and more Muslim students in class, and I was interested in uh, the work of various Muslim ma mathematicians in terms of uh, the beauty of geometry that they that they represent. Here we have uh, crescents. The ratio of the radii of three circles is one to two to three. What's the ratio of the smaller to the of the two crescents to the largest circle? So uh, if you don't know what a crescent is or croissant, we know from our math. This would be the small crescent. You can see it here in the picture. This one is the small one. And this is the large crescent here, spanning around here like a crescent moon or a crescent shape, right? Based on the beauty of the waxing and waning moon, which governs the metatonic calendar of several religions, including uh, like the Hebrew calendar, the Muslim calendar, um, and the... Uh, months that uh, work with the uh, cycles of the moon so as well as the sun and the solar year and the uh, and the motion of the stars but uh, let's go back to this problem the smaller crescent okay so the smaller crescent you have to take the mid-sized circle and subtract the small circle the mid-sized circle is has radius and a ratio of one to two to three so this would be like r equals two minus the smaller circle that's here inside this little orange marble here, minus r equals one. But the area here would then be, say, four pi minus one pi is three pi. Okay, if we just say we don't know what the standard unit is. And then the larger circle is the blue circle. That has a radius of three according to the ratio. Right, so we'll make it one, two, three. So then the area would be nine pi. So setting that up, then we have the area, the ratio of the small crescent, 3 pi, would be in proportion to the entire figure, 9 pi, the largest circle, right? Because these are nested or contained within. So 3 to 9, got pi's get gobbled up, which is the same ratio as 1 to 3. The correct answer was A. The beauty of geometry shows that it would be in a ratio of one to three, even though these are curved or arched pieces, that's a circle and a crescent. So the purple looking crescent is one third of the total area of the blue circle. Amazing stuff. Okay, so let's stop for tonight. Um, thanks for sharing some time with me studying for your SAT. Um, and what we'll do, ladies and gentlemen, remember that uh, your parents uh, know that you're working very hard. So when you put extra time for these standardized tests, you also help with your mental own mental discipline and getting ready for the rigor that you need for high school and college classes and graduate school classes. You have to stay organized and stay confident. Um, I've been a test prep uh, instructor for over 15 years. My students have uh, scored uh, high scores on the SHSAT, PSAT, tax for Catholic schools, cooperative schools, HSPT, PSAT, SAT, ACT, and AP exams, as well as the graduate record exam. Additionally, I've uh, also tutored uh, college students and graduate students for acceptance into uh, medical school, nursing school, business school, as well as uh, engineering programs and doctoral programs. So I would like to thank uh, my students for hiring me to uh, be their personal tutor and to help them succeed in mathematics. It's been an exciting journey for me to go back up and down through the levels of learning from grades five to 12 and up through college and graduate school courses. So it's been a very interesting journey going back and forth through these uh, different levels of mathematics. Um, as math continues to evolve, remember that when you are faced with a standardized test, Nowadays, it's the I think that if you would like to go to college, look into the Regents exams and AP exams, not so much the SAT, which for some reason is being watered down once again. I think that uh, college recruiters, if you want the rigor of an engineering program or math program that uh, I uh, that I majored in, if you're going to go to STEM field, look into AP exams to impress and add to your college portfolio. 
if you'd like to hire me, you can uh, call this number or uh, email me at the uh, Wix website, which is here on the screen. And uh, here are the links to the quiz, classwork, and homework, which I'll leave online for free on my Columbia University Drive. This is the Columbia University Zoom, and it's being recorded and will be shared on my YouTube channel. Please join me next week, November 21st, for lesson number 11. Again, all the collection of the entire course, I'll be sharing 22 lessons this, this year. And if you'd like to hire me as a personal tutor, it'd be an honor to see if our schedules can work out together so we can do so. All right, so thanks for checking me out here uh, and uh, on YouTube and Twitch. And I uh, hope you're enjoying your studying wherever you are, safe travels and good night from New York. Uh, thank you and bye. Thanks, good night.